for Dallas, standing strong on the point, Fissure falls, and Gladiators just in complete disarray here. Goodbye Hydration again, AKM taking out everybody. That would have been a 6k for him if Shaz hadn't dived off the edge. <laughs> this week in the Overwatch League, Stage 2 kicked off with a bang as we saw Dallas Fuel field its two new players, and maybe the beginning of XQC's redemption. The Outlaws came back strong and we had some shocking results and crazy hero picks as teams tried to find the new meta. Plus, we've got all the latest news and the best highlights from the past week. Valium through these doorways, they've got to get onto oh, it. Oh, what a shot! Do it. Fleta with the Helix Rocket, man. One of the biggest questions going into this week was how would Dallas Fuel perform? They were the only team to have two newly signed players who are available to play with the additions of AKM and Rascal, which raised questions over what would happen to their other DPS players, like Taimu and Seagull. Then on top of that, XQC was coming back off suspension. This was a team with a lot of new options to play with, and they took full advantage of it. The addition of AKM seems to have given this team new life. Every match the Frenchman was in, he looked great, particularly on his signature Soldier 76, where he destroyed the opposition time and time again. Comboed with that barrage, like you said, Noah. That's a big one. He was waiting for this one, and everybody Ooh. just on the ground, eating some rockets. Dallas seemed to be playing around him a lot, which is a style I can really see working well with this new map pool. Soldier is a great pick on many of these new maps, and enabling AKM to get into good positions seems to be Dallas's key to victory. And when you've got someone who is potentially the best Soldier 76 in the entire world, that's a great approach. HP eliminated by effect. Whoa, and AKM says, you know what, man? I'm just gonna destroy everybody with a little help from my friends, but that was a blazing attack round from Dallas. Their other new signing, Rascal, didn't have quite as big of a showing, but I'm sure his performance will improve as Dallas refines their traditional dive, which is still one of their weaker compositions. Also, right now, Genji's potential to make big plays is quite limited, as many teams use Dragonblade just to force ultimates out of Zenyatta or Lucia. With these two new DPS players, we saw a role shift from Taimu, but not the one that most people are expecting, as he will now be playing as a main tank. Taimu has always been integral to the team's shot calling, but that's not always the easiest thing to do as a DPS, and is traditionally the role of the main tank, as they're the one who is able to initiate the fights and force the engagements. His performance in their game with Shanghai was reasonable, but I think if they were playing any of the better teams in the league, his mistakes would have been punished much harder. However, with that said, you could clearly see Dallas's focus and communication was much better than we saw from them in most of Stage 1. Then we also saw XQC back in action. Hastro, Dallas Fuel's owner, posted on Twitter just before the match that he would be playing for at least one map. But as we saw, he stayed in for the full series and was named player of the match. What I love about this as well is that he comes back in and deals so much damage afterwards <laughs> We're into this Graviton, ge generates almost another one, and then blocks that Deadeye that was coming out from Sure 4. That's I mean, a fantastic yeah. play coming out it's, from it's XQC. Just... He put in a really great performance, especially as he said that his practice time with the team had been very limited. XQC is a super aggressive tank, and in this match, he had to go head to head with Fisher, a player who is certainly in the conversation for the best main tank in the world, and XQC held his own and got the victory. However, even more important in my eyes than his performance was his post-game interview. Of course, everyone is super happy to see your face back here on this very stage, so I want to give you the last word. Anything you want to say to the people out there supporting you and your team? Uh, I'm super happy to be back uh, after being like a month off and in my room. Um, I'm super glad. Uh, Pog Chem in the chat, and thanks for everyone who supported us. Burn blue! He seemed to be grateful for this second chance, and hopefully, realizing what it's like to win on stage will help him improve his attitude off stage, and we can see Dallas move up the standings. I think in the ideal world, they would use XQC in nearly every game, at least in this current meta. But as I mentioned in last week's video, putting all their eggs in the XQC basket is very risky, and if he gets another suspension, it could be for a really long time and destroy any hope this team has. Which is why I think we're seeing this role change from Taimu, but I can see Dallas leaning more and more into XQC if he proves himself to the team. The other big question going into this week was what teams would find their footing in the new meta first. Certain heroes really came up big on a number of occasions. 
For example, we saw Sombra being used to hold the first point on Volskaya to amazing effect. The London Spitfire in particular nailed the strategy and full held the New York Excelsior. Raining down death and destruction from above. There's the EMP. Finally, Hago sees his opportunity. And well, with that hack out, they will get the cleanup. London Spitfire doing a fantastic job here of holding against New York Excel. The importance of good tank play also rose drastically without the instant Mercy Resurrect available. This was a big part of how the Outlaws won both their games this week, particularly against Boston, where Moom and Coolmat played an insane series. Manny, maybe get no Kellex taken out actually. Oh, and Mooma going wild. No pun intended, but that primal rage is doing work for Houston. Speaking of Boston, their poor performance in the first week was a real surprise. They were already playing a great dive at the end of stage one, so to see them lose every single game this week was a shock. However, Dream Casper playing Doomfist on King's Row was exciting and something I want to see more of. And Zarya not really in the meta, but we're going to see it here, Noah. It works out. The other team gets dunked, that's for sure. Dream Casper coming in. He's going to say, oh, there we go. Come on and slam and welcome to the jail. He missed. Oh, come on. I say you up so nicely, Dream Casper. <laughs> we also saw the Philadelphia Fusion step up in a big way and seemingly hit a whole new level. They've always been a team with fantastic DPS, but for this week, we saw one of their previously benched players make his way onto the stage as EQO took over for Shadowburn. Honestly, I didn't believe they could step it up this much. This small roster change seems to have tweaked how the whole team are playing. Fraggy, the main tank, who got a reputation for dying constantly last stage, now seems unstoppable, and then Carpe, who was already an insane hitscan player, seems to have found a whole new level. A bit like how Widowmaker can change it in a blink of an eye! There we go! Carpe and EQO! But Carpe with the two monster kills, and he continues to do the damage! Three kills for Carpe, and now he's going close oh, quarters, you, and he pinned it down through to the wall. One of their 4 0 victories was over the Florida Mayhem, and although their scoreline for this match and their game against New York isn't great, it doesn't tell the full story. The Mayhem actually played a lot better in this meta, and with some of their new signings on the way, I really expect them to get a few upsets over the lower teams in the league. What's healing from someone? Zuppa actually managed to get Mecho D Mech between. Oh! Are you kidding me? Get out! The Shock was another team that lost both of their games, but seemed like a completely different team in their second match of the week and played very well against Sol. I'll be interested to see how they perform next week against the Valiant. Spawn, we're gonna get a replay here. This is certainly going to be the big policy spots. Both of them blinks in, perfect. Clean cut play there from Dante to get things rolling. Speaking of Valiant, they do not seem to have adjusted very well. And as a result, the Shanghai Dragons made them work pretty hard for their only victory this week. But I would expect the Valiant to sort things out quickly. Soon and Fate still had great performances, and it should just be a matter of time before everyone else is on the same level. It's kind of odd from Shanghai. Agility is going to end up being grabbed here. Great placement. The shield must still be a problem. Oh, there it is. It's the Hail Mary Pulse Bomb. How well the Dallas Fuel have adjusted will be properly tested next week, but they seem to be doing well in their Soldier 76 compositions, but the traditional dive is still a bit messy, as we saw when they tried it against the Gladiators. Primal Rage Miku. coming back up. Oh, the supports are down for Gladiators. The golden opportunity in for Dallas. Can they do it? This would be an insane push if they can finish this one up. And Custom with the Coal Essence. You gotta be kidding me. Fissure gets low. Shaz now on the Doom Fist. He's down! Are you kidding me? They have done it in OT, an extended fight somehow, some way. The Gladiators themselves are adjusting to the addition of Fisher as well as the new meta, which will take a little bit more time. But Fisher is so good, they're already looking better, and I will be keeping a close eye on this team going forward. Rascal down, hydration with an early kill there. Both DPS, DPS taken very out. Nice. Oh, and that's gonna just be a boot from hydration to take down Mickey. Barrage coming in to clean this one up, and I think that's gonna be Gladiators getting some control percent building. Soul were a team I fully expected to adjust well to this new meta, and they haven't disappointed. When they played the Valiant in stage one, the LA team came out on top, but this time around, Soul destroyed them with four straight wins. I assume he's still alive, and we see Jayhawk chasing him down on the backside of the point right now. He's gonna recall and get hit! Oh my, what a shot! Going up to the top of the leaderboard, we have the NYXL, who had one win and one loss this week. They seem to have adapted by playing a lot of dive, which just wasn't enough to overcome London, who played many different compositions. But New York could have been just stuck with this strategy, as their support player Ark was out of action with a wrist injury, leaving one of their main tank players to pick up Lucio in his absence. And make it real difficult. Ah! 
There we go, the D Matrix stopping that one. But look at the damage coming in from Libero when they're all stacked up, one on top of the other in that room. No way to get away out of the way of the dashes. Last but not least, we have the Shanghai Dragons who continue to struggle. They had some good moments, but in their match against Dallas, they ended up with a worse result than they got at the end of stage one, indicating that Shanghai really needs their new signings to get on stage as soon as possible. It'll take a while before they get back into the fight. Custer's lingering. His low HP transcends its force. And now Dallas have to make something out of this. Come forward and make this a big fight. But D is behind him. Pulse bomb stuck. He connects with Oh, he gets oh. two. Both Rose killer Custer fall down. A title was the third. D and now really start to turn up. The match of the week came down to two games, and both of them included the London Spitfire. First of all, they took on the Outlaws, and the Houston boys took the series 3-2 in what I thought was going to be the best game. But when London and New York went head-to-head -head for the third time, sparks flew once again. What I loved about this game was that we saw two totally different approaches to finding Stage 2's new meta. New York played almost exclusively dive, with some variations on their second DPS. London, on the other hand, wanted to try some new things out, and we saw quite a mixture of different team compositions from them. Volskaya was a great example of this. NYXL's defense used a Stage 1 classic of Mercy and Widowmaker with a dive team to make space. But it eventually fell to London's attack. This will always favor the offense, and headshots will also favor the offense as Bird Ring takes down St. Yorby. They have Mecco trying to do the best that he can here to stop the bleeding! Then when it was London's turn to defend, they set up the Sombra and Soldier 76, and New York had no answer for it and were full held. They had that EMP every fight. New York looks a little bit lost there. They should know that you have to take over right side room if you want to deny the Sombra. Then on Lijiang Tower, we saw New York tie it back up with a traditional dive. But we also saw London keep things interesting with some Reaper play and innovative positioning, which I think would have been enough to defeat any lesser team. But diving in on a Reaper as a Winston, not gonna work out for you. Kings Row saw both teams mixing it up with a variety of defenses built around Orissa, some triple and quad tank from London and a bit of dive from both teams. But in the end, it was New York who pulled off the win. Those ultimates. I wonder where this nano boost is gonna go for New York. Oh, no way, unbelievable, he gets knocked out of the pack. On Gibraltar, we saw the Battle of the Widowmakers as Pine and Birdring each try to outplay each other, but in the end, it was London forcing the tiebreaker. Onak doesn't know what hit him. Birdring, clever angle right over the top. And there's Birdring looking for the headshot, hoping to find Mono. Mono out in the open. There's the follow up. Birdring reigns supreme at the top of the apex here. And the high ground does it all. London Spitfire will get their third point. The final map took us to Ilios, where New York had previously reigned supreme but we saw a clear drop in performance from Pine, who's normally the standout DPS on this map. Whether he was having an off game, or the lack of a mercy meant that he wasn't being enabled to make those big plays like he normally does, I'm not sure. But Birdering got the better of him, and London pulled off the win. There's no pack there to keep you alive, Janice. You're gonna have to back off. Pine, both exchanging the body shots. Couldn't cut it closer. And there we go, Birdering wins the duel. Pine is out of it, Birdering now reigns. He gets to call the shots and hit him too. There's been no official signing since last week, but some rumours are floating around. The first is that a member of the Korean team Runaways has been signed by an Overwatch League team. There's not much info on who it might be, but a lot of speculation is looking at Stitch, a DPS player and a great tracer. Tizzy is also someone to keep an eye on, as main tanks are hot property right now in the league, as teams scramble to get at least two solid ones. Another one of the top unsigned players is Architect, a top tier Korean Genji player who turns 18 very soon. His team, X6 Gaming, posted this week that they're looking for new members because of Overwatch League transfers. So it's very likely that he's been picked up by a team. But saying they're looking for members implies it could be more than one leaving. On his stream, Architect said that the rumours of him going to Houston or London were not something official, but he also mentioned that he's going to stick with fellow X6 Gaming DPS, Godspeed. So keep an eye out for these two being picked up soon. Taking a quick look at the overall standings, we can see a few important shifts, as Seoul climbs back into 3rd and Dallas moves out of the bottom of the league, going from 10th to 9th and only a single map win under the LA Gladiators. The Fusion's 2 wins also moves them up into the top 6, with 8 wins alongside the Valiant and Spitfire. As for the Stage 2 standings, it's hard to read too much into things right now, as some of the teams have had much tougher weeks than others. Philly being on top, however, is very exciting for them, but it will be a couple of weeks before we can start really seeing which teams have a chance at the playoffs. Looking into next week, we have some more great games. Dallas will be tested hard against Seoul to kick things off, and we will see just how much their new players really help them. Valiant vs Shock is also an interesting match to see if both teams can stabilise in the new meta.
on day two, Outlaws and Fusion battle it out in a match that will put the winner at the top of the stage two rankings. On day three, Mayhem might have a chance to upset the odds against a struggling Boston, unless the uprising can sort things out. And we also have Dallas vs The Valiant in another interesting matchup. Then on day four, London and The Fusion will battle it out. If London can get the win here, it will definitely improve their position in stage two, but the way The Fusion have been playing, they could be on a hot streak. The Houston Outlaws vs the New York Excel is the next match and possibly the most important so far as a decisive win here could potentially put the Outlaws on top in the standings. Which matches are you most excited about next week? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and as always, this is James Fakers saying thanks for watching and enjoy the game.